I'm going to make a very complex and complicated issue as simple as possible, just for the sake of all of us knowing what the basic Jewish law regard regarding abortion actually is. What we know for sure is that if a mother's life is endangered because of her pregnancy, because of the fetus, it is a mitzvah, a commandment from God to terminate that pregnancy. Once the baby's head emerges from the vaginal canal, it is considered an independent life. And anyone who takes the life of that child is considered in Torah law to have committed murder. What about rape and incest? Well, the Torah doesn't actually mention these contexts, but our rabbis know that the Torah recognizes that trauma, psychiatric trauma is real and can lead to a person taking their own life or their life being threatened. The psychological and emotional trauma of a woman carrying a pregnancy that was conceived through rape or incest can create such horror in her life that abortion becomes a possible option because her life might be in danger carrying that pregnancy or actually birthing that child. What about a fetus that will one day, God forbid, become a child that will suffer or pass away young because of genetic abnormalities or diseases? For example, Tay-Sachs disease, which is horrible and the most tragic thing I've ever heard of, where a child will almost always pass away from ages three to six, I believe. Even then, majority of halachic authorities say that it is absolutely not allowed to abort that fetus, even if you know for a fact that that child will be born, God forbid, with Tay-Sachs disease or any other genetic abnormalities. But again, this is complicated. The very controversial but well-respected leading authority on halacha and medicine, Rabbi Eliezer Walderman, actually ruled that a mother can absolutely abort a fetus which she knows will one day become a child with Tay-Sachs disease up until the last trimester. And he hauntingly wrote the words when he made this ruling, God must forgive me for making this halacha, for making this ruling. And again, on the other hand, Rabbi Moshe Feinstein, who is a halachic genius, said it is absolutely prohibited from touching a fetus that will one day become a child with Tay-Sachs disease. So again, it's very complicated. This is why so many young Jews get genetic testing done while dating, before getting married. Like myself, I did this, my husband did this, thank God we matched each other before we met each other. In order to prevent, God forbid, anyone falling in love or getting married to a person who is a carrier for the same genetic disease as they are. Okay, now possibly the most important part and listen very carefully. Nowhere in the Torah, nowhere in Halakha and Jewish law is there any allowance or source for a woman to go to an abortion clinic and get an abortion because she doesn't feel like becoming a mother, because she is not with the man that impregnated her anymore, because she wants to focus on her career, because she wants to live uh, her life as a young woman and, and have that experience of being a young person, uh, single and without children, that is absolutely not allowed anywhere in Judaism. I'm seeing so many women online saying, women have the right to choose, women have the right to have a choice about being a mother. And my response to that is, adult women almost always know that if they are sexually active, there is a chance that they will get pregnant. Even if they're using contraceptives, there is a chance they will get pregnant. And if they continue to be intimate with that person, they are making that choice. This is what an adult, being an adult means. You have a responsibility. You can do something like this. Well, there are repercussions or consequences or whatever you wanna call it. If you are sexually active, you know that there is a chance you can get pregnant. And if you continue to be sexually active and you get pregnant, that is your choice because you knew that this was a possibility. So what's the bottom line? Honestly, the more the government stays out of abortion laws, the better for us Jews because then we can better keep the mitzvot of abortion, which are incredibly complex and don't always align with the government. On the other hand, in my opinion, the way that abortion is becoming something so taken so lightly, like going into a grocery store and buying something, um, in my opinion, is reflective of an inner moral rot in our society, in our culture, in our in a, and in our world. I just read that singer Phoebe Bridges, whose song Motion Sickness, I am obsessed with and I love. I was so shaken when I heard this. Last year, I heard she was on tour. And in the middle of her tour, she found out she was pregnant. She went, got an abortion and continued with her tour. Like nothing ever happened. This, in my opinion, again, is reflective of an inner moral rot in our society. And there you have it. That's Judaism's takes on abortion and Roe versus Wade.